Let's begin. Well, let's continue. So uh, the famous river question, an observer is standing on the shore of a river that flows to the south. Okay, I guess if I'm going to dulp, which way does the river flow? I'm going to draw a compass rose first because, you know, it's not like I haven't messed that up before. I guess this time I'll draw the river kind of vertically since it flows to the south. Obviously, right? Right. The boat's velocity is 12 meters per second, 55 degrees east of south. East of what? South. East of what? South. East of what? South. I guess I'm going to start out going south. And then I'm going to go east of south. Okay, if I dulp this, it's going to be 12 meters per second. And this angle here is 55 degrees. Is that okay, Armand? Yeah? And I, that's, for me, too small to work with. So I'm going to draw that just a bit bigger. Here's the 12. Here's the 55 degrees. So we have 12 meters per second at an angle of 55 degrees. Did I say angle? Components. And that's something you're going to hear me start to say more and more often. Did you say angle? Components. We're not going to deal with that slanty 12. It's yucky. Instead, we're going to say that's moving in two different ways. It's moving in a vertical direction, and it's moving in a horizontal direction. So I'm going to go d d d d d d d d d Usually, I drew horizontal first, but I think here I'm clearly going to draw the vertical first, looking at where that 55 is. And then d d d d d d d d d Color, 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 color. Jack, what do you want to find first, VX or VY? I don't care. Wait, 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 wait. Jack, what's A asking me to find? Which one of these is the current? And I probably should have drawn just, uh, just to help me a little arrow with the VR to remind myself that it's flowing south. And yeah, it, and you know what, Mr. Duick? You drew these wrong. Thank you, because I was going, oh, it's got to be VY. I'm sorry. I put the X and Y in the wrong place. I'm so used to doing the X first. Y is vertical. Yes? Sorry, that's totally on me. I'll leave that on YouTube just so that my YouTube people who watch know I make mistakes all the time. I don't edit these or try and make these videos perfect. Warts and all is the phrase that I decided when I first started putting these online. So do it screwed up. First of many. So not VX, but V, because I asked you to. OK. Um, so Jack, this is what I want to find. That 12, opposite of Jason or hypotenuse. What about VY? Which trig function? Well, and this is where I'm hoping by maybe the end of next week, you've internalized it enough that Sokotoa is a crutch you no longer need. But, or write down Sokotoa. I'm fine with that. I'll never say don't do that. Which one? You said it. Yeah, of course it is. What goes next to the trig function? The angle. I know the angle this time, so this is not second function cos. 55 equals... Vy over 12. Vy, which Manchand, you're right, is Vr, the river, is, uh, how would I get the Vy? Oh, 12 times cos, yes? You get 6.883, probably a good place to round off, right in front of that 9. No? Am I wrong? Oh, I'm seeing knots. Okay, six point eight eight three. Again, I strongly encourage you to follow along on your calculator. Cool. Cool. Percy, what does B want me to find? Ah, he already went the extra step. Well, he wants me to find how fast the boat's moving across the river. That's got to be VX. Uh, which trig function? Sign, you say? Okay. You're right, that's going to be opposite. By the way, I guess I could use tangent, but I might have gotten VY wrong, so why bother? 
Um, I think it's going to be sine 55 is Vx over 12. So Vx, which is also, I guess, V engine. Yes? That's the speed of the boat through still water. Is uh, I think I can just backspace and edit. Sign button. You get 9.82... You know what? I guess 9.830. In fact, really, 9.8300, I think. So that'll work. If you're not sure, or if I give you a question like this on a test, and you want to do a quick check for mistakes, if you reverse engineer this with Pythagoras, 6.883 squared plus 9.830 squared. Square root should be really close to 12. Close enough. I've rounded off. So there's a bit of an error check that you can do if you have extra time, Owen. Owen, what's the C you want me to find? Re read it to me the whole thing. Stop. Let's go to my dull. You know what? That 320 meters, I think that would run this way. That's a distance. Is that a horizontal distance or a vertical distance? I'm going to call this dx. And again, my apologies to those of you who have done calculus. This is where I commit a major error in physics 11 when I use d for distance. Because I know there's going to be a dx and a dy. It's a subscript. It's not a derivative, but I know. All I can say is if you made it through calculus, you're probably clever enough to keep these straight. I hope. Okay. Uh, what did you say this question wanted me to find, Owen? So here was our argument. We said for these questions, you can assume that A is zero. That's also the case for an airplane and a crosswind question. We could handle one with an acceleration. It's just, it's ugly and it's not that useful. Rivers don't speed up and slow down spontaneously really quickly. What if there's like a dam that bursts? Yeah, I mean, in general, the Fraser doesn't suddenly, oh, it's going three meters per second and two seconds later, now it's going 12 meters per second. It doesn't work that way. And crosswinds generally don't work that way either. So Davis, I could do it for the math, but the application would be lame. So A is zero. Uh, which means we can go d equals vt. What happened to the plus a half at squared? a is. And what happened to the vi? I always say, well, if a is 0, your v initial is your v final, is your v middle, is your v1, because you're not speeding up or slowing down. Oh, but wait a minute. You said this was a horizontal distance. Which velocity am I going to use then? Yes. Horizontals into horizontal. By, that's Petco by far the biggest mistake kids make, you don't know where we're going yet, but the biggest mistake kids make is they want to put a horizontal into a vertical or a vertical into a horizontal. Especially there's one situation where the acceleration is zero and they all want to put a 9.8 in, a vertical acceleration, because oh, there's no acceleration. Yes, there is. It's zero. It's a nice number. I made the question easier. How would I get the T by itself, Owen? So it's going to be 320 divided by 9.83. If you have the 9.8298, you know, use your answer button if it's still on your calculator. Mine isn't because I did that error check. You get 32.55, 32 32.6. I'll go to four sig figs. 32.55 seconds. Now, the disadvantage with doing it this way is this boat's going to end up drifting a long ways down the river, and if this is where the people are trying to get to, they're then going to have to schlep their way back. Who wants to do that? So, D. Petco, what's D want me to find? Which one? Because I asked you to. Do you want, yeah, a vertical distance in this case. 
if you don't like X and Y, you could call it D South or D North or D East or D whatever works, but I'm lazy. X and Y works for me and I can keep it straight from calculus notation because I know I'm not doing calculus in physics 12. Go figure. So again, we're going to use dy equals vy t. Oh, I need a vertical time. Or do I? Why can I use time in both equations, in part c and part d? Because time is a scalar. scalar. Spoiler alert, you're going to spend most of your time finding time when we get to complicated questions because it's going to be the one thing that can go into a horizontal or a vertical equation. And so if you have that, in fact, you're going to hear me say later on, if I know the time, the question's going to fall apart. Here we can plug and chug. Uh, what was VY? It was 6.833, 6.883. Time was 32.55. I'm going to use my answer button, Jordana, since it's still sitting on my calculator. You get 224. That'll get you across to the other side the quickest, but that's probably not the smartest way to do it because you have to walk back. What's the boat's engine velocity? We already answered that. Which one of the vectors that we found? Which one of the components? By the way, a common mistake, kids will say, isn't the engine velocity 12? That can't be because that includes the current. 9.83? Is Matt right? I mean, it's Matt. Yes? OK. Now that we've done a couple, oh, sorry, let, let's get to F and then I'll go on my rant. F, suppose you want the boat to land directly across from its starting point. What direction should you point the boat? So we have the river like this. My first argument, is I think I'm going to have to point the boat that way into the current because that way, Jack, oh, the current is pushing it south. The boat is pushing north and it'll go straight across like that, I think. Got the argument, but we need to draw a bit of a vector triangle. However, however, I do know how big this line is. This is the engine. This is the boat through still water because that's which way we're pointing the boat. What else is also pushing on the boat? The river, the current. So I want to add the velocity of the engine and the velocity of the current. How might I, how might I add these two things together? Draw them. But how do I know whether to draw the current that long or that long? Because, Armand, I know what the resultant direction is supposed to be. I want it to go directly across from its starting point. I want the resultant to be dead horizontal. So tell me when to stop drawing the current vector. Good. And then the resultant is from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. Now I'm using VR for river, and re I'm going to change my notation. I'm going to call this V, V current, and I'll call this one V resultant. I don't know. Bad notation on my part. And you'll notice, Matt, this time I'm not finding a hypotenuse. I'm finding a side. But I do know each of these. This was 9.83, and this was 6. Po what was the current? 6 point something, I think. 6.883. Where am I going to put the theta, by the way? Bottom left or top right? Theta. Color, color, color. Part A just asks the direction. So I guess here I'm going to find the theta, and then I'll do the north of south, east of west, what of what. Uh, that's 6.883, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. What about uh, the engine? I disagree. Oh, yeah. Which trig function? Um. Sine of mystery angle equals opposite 
over hypotenuse. And I think I said to you last day, Harsh, that it's usually tangent for easier questions when you're finding the angle, but in this case, definitely not. We're using sine to find the angle. You get 44.4 degrees. North of south, east of west, what of what? North of east. Nice, man. Good. Or 90 minus that. 45.6 degrees east of north, but probably most of us would do it that way. B. B wants the resultant vertical velocity, the magnitude. It's going to be Pythagoras. But I could do Sokotoa trig using my angle from part A, but again, Marcella, why would I use an answer to find an answer? Although, we're, no matter what, we're using answers to find answers, so maybe I should just say do it in the shortest way possible. For me, I can do Pythagoras in my sleep. But because it's not a hypotenuse, it's not going to be 9.83 squared plus 6.883 squared. It's going to be 9.83 squared minus 6.883 squared square root. Right? Yeah, yeah. Remember Pythagoras? So the resultant is going to be, I'll put it in the notes, 9.83 squared minus 6.883 squared, and then square root your answer. 9.83 squared minus 6.883 squared, and then square root answer button. Do you get 7.02? Or am I wrong? Percy's nodding, now I'm worried. No, yeah? By the way, that is a horizontal velocity. Is that right? Yes. How long would it take to get across this way? What was the distance? 320 meters? 320 divided by this. Now I'm getting 45.6 seconds. How long did it take us the first time for part C to get across? So you'll save some time the other way, but you'll lose that time having to walk back a couple of hundred meters to get to your destination. Here, you'll be in the boat a bit longer, but you'll probably overall save time. Example three. I like example three. I like example three. I like example three. Example three is a nice question. Except it's missing the word is. An airplane is flying through a wind. The wind blows due east at 60 meters per second. Oop, I'm going to do a compass rose. The airplane wants to fly due north at 260 meters per second. That's what we want our ground velocity to be. What should the plane's engine velocity be? Magnitude and direction. So I'm going to argue we have an airplane in a crosswind. It starts with V engine plus V wind equals, I'm stealing this right from your formula sheet, but I'm a breathing. I think that's what I gave you on your formula sheet. Oh, I got one here. Mr. Why don't you look? Yeah, V engine plus V wind equals V ground for airplane and a crosswind. Kai, what does this want me to find? VE. How would I get the VE by itself? How would I move the VW over? Subtract, you say. So you're telling me that the engine velocity is going to be the ground velocity minus the wind velocity? Sure, yes. Except how do I subtract vectors? I don't. What do I do instead? Remember? So I'm going to write this as plus, and then I'll put a negative right there. Kai, what was V ground, magnitude, and direction? You have to do a little deciphering and thinking. I know. First of all, is it the 60? Why? What's the 60? So, keep reading. 
direction? It's got to be this. What was the wind magnitude and direction as the question gave it to me? Read it to me, please. What would negative wind be? 60 meters per second. And I drew the 60 way short because 240 divided by 60 is 4, so this roughly one quarter is long. Have I successfully turned my subtraction question into an addition question? Well then, Kyle, how do I add two vectors together? I think I'll draw them. You don't say. I have to think about this triangle a bit. Look up. Just be cautious. I was going to start to draw here, but if I do that, I'm going over my equal sign and I'm running into this. I realized because I was going to move to my left, I made sure that I put my initial vector a little further over to the right so there was room. There's the 260. There's the 60. The resultant is from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. This is which direction the pilot should point his plane. And this is how much throttle the pilot should point his or her plane. I said his could be a her too. Oh, uh, where will theta go? Top left, bottom right. Color, 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 color. The right angle goes there. Good, solve this. I'll do it up here and see if we get the same thing. Um, what's 3 plus 5 in your head? Everybody? What's 5 plus 3 in your head? When you're adding, does order matter? Same with vectors. What's 3 minus 5 in your head? What's 5 minus 3? Do you get the same answer if you change the order when you subtract? No. Does order matter when you're subtracting? Yes. Same with vectors. So don't be casual or sloppy in your rewriting this and just think, oh, I'll go V win minus V ground that give me the same answer. No, if you were adding them together, you could pick and choose and go with the easiest way to draw the triangle. If you're subtracting, you're kind of committed to the order that they gave you. It's okay. I would consider this a good B plus level question. Okay, eh, maybe even an A minus level question. What would make this an A plus level question? If instead of right angles, these one of these had angles in it and you had to break it into components. I don't think I'll give one like that on a test. I'll probably give you one like that as a nasty on a quiz because they just it just takes a lot of time. Yeah. Split what? When you said those, which those? Oh, if I had put an angle in there? I'd break it into components. Well, okay, that's a lie. I would probably do it using the sine law and the cosine law because I can do that in my sleep. I, I've actually done questions side by side using break it into components, Sokotoa, Pythagoras, and okay, I can get straight there using the sine law, cosine law. Sine law and the cosine law, it's about two lines less work, which isn't substantial. If you're really good at the sine law and the cosine law, I did put them on your formula sheet Go ahead and use them. If you know that sine of big A over little a equals sine of big B over little b equals sine of big C over little c. 
or if you know that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2ab cos c, or b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos b, or c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c, are all variations of the same thing. Great. It, it, it's weird, Sky. Actually, Sokotoa trig is redundant. You don't need Pythagoras or Sokotoa trig. The sine law and the cosine law will solve any triangle, including right angle triangles. But Sokotoa and Pythagoras, Matt, they're lovely shortcuts. So if you want to know how to use the sine law and the cosine law, hit me up during a Teams meeting on a blended session or pop in during a blended session and I'll walk you through it. Oh, put your pencils down, look up. What's your homework? You're probably going to need to do these on a separate piece of paper. Okay. One, number one, you can probably do in your head or without writing anything down. 5.5 .5 south plus 7.2 north. That's physics 11. Who's winning? Who's losing? That's really what I was doing in physics 11 with my winner minus loser shtick. Uh, same with number two. But number three, you're going to need to draw that, I think. I'll skip four. Five. Um, I'll skip six. Seven is good. Turn the page. I'll skip eight. Nine is good. Ten is good. Eleven is good. 12 is good. Skip 13. Fourteen is doable. Fifteen. I like number sixteen. I like number sixteen. So do sixteen. Seventeen is another river question. And yeah, one more airplane question. I know it's a lot, but I'm giving you, we're, we're, we're done. Um, so I will show you later on towards the end of class, a short little video explaining wind chill and what's meant by that, because it seems appropriate and there's some lovely physics there. Is that all right, Ange? Okay. The class, my angels, is yours, and you can also work on the homework from last day.